Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev, and today we're going to be looking at a common SQL interview question, which is the FizzBuzz challenge. The rules of the challenge are as follows. Using the numbers 1 to 100, whenever a number divides by 3, replace that number with the word fizz. Whenever a number divides by 5, replace that number with the word buzz. And whenever a number divides by both, we want to replace that with the word fizzbuzz. Let's jump over to SQL Server Management Studio and we'll look at a few examples of how we can do this. So initially what we're going to start off with is a simple print statement. I'm just going to declare a variable initially, that's just going to be an integer, and we're going to set that as 1. And then we're going to begin by writing our while loop. So while our variable is less than or equal to 100, we're going to say begin, print our variable uh, at n and then we're going to set our variable equals our variable and we're going to add a 1 to it as well so that will continue the loop so I'm hoping what this will do is print the number 1 because that's our initial set for our variable it's then going to update our variable to the number 2 go through the loop again and hopefully we should end up with the numbers 1 to 100 so I've just executed that there and as you can see, we've got the numbers 1 to 100 printed. So now let's get on to the challenge. So initially, when the number divides by 3, we need to replace that with the word fizz. But I'm just going to introduce you to an operator in SQL called modulo or modulo. I don't know exactly how you pronounce it. I always call it modulo. Um, so what we're going to do is say 3 modulo 3. And what this actually does is, if a number is completely divisible with zero remainders, uh, it would show us zero as the result. So what it actually does is, once the division has taken place, it gives us the result as the remainder. So I'll give you an example here. If I go 3 modulo 3, 3 divides by 3 equally, so I'd expect zero remainder. So if I execute that now, and I've got my result as 0. So even if I was to do 6, so 6 divided by 3 is 2, but again there are 0 remainders there, so if I execute that, that still shows a 0. If I was to change that to 5, 5 divided by 3 once, but then there's a remainder of 2. So if I execute that, and then we get 2 as the result. So that's really a key operator within this challenge. Now what I'm going to do is declare another variable. So this is going to handle the text for us, the character strings. So I'm going to declare uh, a variable called uh, result, and that's going to be of varchar10, um, just to cope with the word fizzbuzz. So what we're going to do is, initially we're going to set our result as blank, and note this is within the loop, and then we're going to say if at n modulo 3 equals 0 so if our number if our variable integer variable divides by 3 with a zero remainder we're going to set at result equal to the word or the character string fizz we're going to change our print to print the result statement and if we have a look at this now in fact, I won't execute that because we also need to build in if at result is blank, so if it doesn't divide by 3 and leave a 0 remainder, then we want to set our result to our integer variable, in this case, n. So if I go ahead, I'll just get rid of this statement down the bottom of the page. So if I go ahead and execute this now, we can see we've still got the numbers 1 to 100, you won't see a, an amount of rows here because we, we're actually printing. Um, but every third number has been replaced by the word fizz successfully. So now under this what I'm going to do is if our variable modulo 5 equals 0, we're going to set our result equal to the, the word buzz. And if I go and execute that now, we can see we've got 1, 2, fizz. 4, buzz, fizz, 7, 8, and so on. But if we look down to number 15, that is shown as the word buzz, and we'd expect that to show as fizzbuzz. 
So because uh, modulo 3 is being processed first, that's probably update that will be updating our result set at that time to the word fizz. But then our line after that will update that number 15 to the word buzz. So we need to handle that. So what we're going to do is set our result equals at result plus buzz. So even if the word so our result might be blank at this stage but if it does divide by five and leave a zero remainder we'd have the word buzz so let's go ahead and execute that now and as we can see 15 has been updated to fizzbuzz um, we look down and 30 has been updated to fizzbuzz as well and so on we're going to now move on to another example Printing the results is probably not the best way to do things and the interviewer may not be very happy with that unless he's actually stated that you shouldn't print the results though. I guess that is fine, you've actually shown the correct results. So we're going to move on to looking at a table variable. So I'm just going to declare a table variable called results and that's going to contain a column called results uh, that is again going to be a varchar. 10. Again we're going to declare a variable n which is going to be an integer and we're going to set that equal to 1. Again we're going to use a while loop uh, to build this, build the results to insert into the table variable and what we're going to say is while our variable is less than or equal to 100 insert into at results uh, result and we're going to say select at n and then we're going to set our variable equal to our variable plus one again and then we're going to end so that should drop our results into well it should drop the numbers one to a hundred into our results table variable let's just run a select all from that at the end of the query and see if we get the correct result. I forgot to put the word table there so it doesn't know it's a table. Let's run that now. So now we've got a hundred rows and we've got the numbers one to a hundred in the column called results. So now what we're going to look at is a case statement uh, instead of using if. So that's another option. So we're going to do a case and um, we're going to say when result uh, modulo 3 equals 0 then fizz when result modulo 5 equals 0 then buzz else result end and if we just process that now we now see I'll just give that result a name and if I process that now I keep forgetting to add in the declares at the top so we've again got one two fizz four buzz fizz but again, when we go down to 15 this time, we've got the word fizz, because in a case it's choosing the first result. So as soon as that result's processed, it's no longer passed to the second, second processing stage. So what we're going to add on initially is we're going to say when result modulo 3 and result modulo 5, then fizzbuzz. So we're going to process that first of all. And if I run the whole statement now, I forgot to put on my equals zeros. I'll just add those in. Highlight that, res uh, that script. And if I run that now, We've got the correct results. We've got one, two, three, fizz, four, buzz, and 15 showing us fizz buzz as well. So is 30, 
so is 45 and so on so that's another way to do it using a table variable and we actually get a result set there rather than just printing the results so that would be better than a printing of the results as well and then we're going to move on to our final example where we're going to be looking at a recursive CTE. I will copy these code snippets into the description, so if you do want to have a look at them, please feel free to look in the description. Uh, so I'll just give that some comments, and then we'll move on to a recursive CTE, which could be the best way of processing this challenge. So how I'm going to start this is with the keyword with, we're just going to call it CTE for now. I'm going to say as select one union all just need to add in a column for the CTE we'll just call that N and we'll say select N plus one so N's going to be pasted one's going to be inserted into the CTE into column N then it's going to come back it's going to recognize N and it's going to add one to it so we're going to say from CTE where N is less than 100 notice I'm only using less than rather than less than or equal to because we're going to be starting with one we only and then we're going to be adding two so we only want to process that really 99 times and then if I just run a select all from this CTE just to show you how this is going to work so if I just process that we've now got N and our numbers 1 to 100 you can see now if I would have changed that to less than or equal to and run that again I'd end up with 101 results because it would still process when we've inserted 100 it would process once more so we're using the word uh, we're using less than within our recursive CTE and again what I'm going to do in this case uh, is just use a case statement so as above case when uh, when n modulo 3 and n modulo 5 equals 0 then fizzbuzz when n modulo 3 equals 0 then fizz and when n modulo 5 equals 0 then buzz I'm going to end that sorry else n end and that's going to be from our CTE so if we highlight all of that and execute it we get an error so we'll need to convert I'll just add a cast in there as well so if I highlight all of that and execute it we can see that's shown the correct results now what we're also going to look at is just a quick look at the client statistics on processing each of these and to see which one would actually be the best, the most efficient. So I'm just going to right click and press include client statistics. You can turn that on and off up here, also press shift alt and s. So we're just going to process our print initially. Um, so once you've processed that if you open up client statistics you can see down here client processing time which is what we're going to be looking at for this example so that's got a result set of 98 if I then look at the table variable and process that again I forgot to include the declare statements and um, we look at our client statistics ignore trial 2 because that actually failed so the client processing time has gone down to 68 and then if we process the result set using the recursive CTE and look at the client statistics we can see the client processing time is almost instant but there is a catch with recursive CTEs if I was to change this to less than 10,000 and try and execute that it would say the statement's been terminated the maximum recursion 100 
has been exhausted. So by default, you can only use a recursive CTE to process a hundred times. You can use the option of max recursion. So that's just the keyword option after the select and just set that to whatever you need, 10,000. And then if I was to process that now, that would work successfully. We can see there the client processing time is still very minimal. However, if I was to go up to 100,000 and try and change the max recursion to 100,000, I'd get another error. So the maximum you can actually process in terms of recursions is 32,767. So that could be a catch. You could get this question and it might ask you to process 35,000 numbers, in which case you wouldn't be able to use a recursive CTE. There are many other ways of doing this. I thought I'd just go through a few examples. If you do have another way of doing that, this, please post it in the comments below. I hope you have enjoyed that video guys do let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do more on interview questions or what area you're particularly interested in do check out my other videos on the channel subscribe to the channel and click that notification button to be made aware of when I upload videos thanks a lot for watching